how would I learn structural engineering if I could start all over again? That's the question I'm gonna be answering and with seven plus years in the structural engineering industry, designing and engineering buildings, there are at least four things that I would wanna focus on back when I was in college, university, or a young professional. The first one is learn about construction. Why is this important? First, if you don't know how things are constructed and you're just designing and you're going to the second decimal place on the spacing of rebar, you're just going to look like a complete noob. Not only will your engineers look at you funny, but the architects and contractors uh, will also be asking questions on, wait, this isn't going to work, and what is the engineer thinking? And second, it just didn't make sense to me to be learning about the structural engineering of a material such as uh, steel, steel beams, without learning how even a steel building or a steel bridge is even constructed and all of the elements of that building system and how everything comes together. It seemed like you were just learning about the theory about something, but you don't even know what that is and how it looks like in the real world. So how would I have learned this and gotten better at construction back at university, for example? Back then, I would have looked up books and tried to get internships uh, if I could in some of those construction industries. Uh, but even nowadays, there's a lot of videos and resources online that you can actually just look up. For example, if you're learning about steel, AISC, their website, they have great resources on, they even have a presentation on how steel is constructed and erected. And that's free. And if you're learning about concrete, you can go to some of the other resources. I know there's the ACI, CRSI, they have some resources that might be paid, but you could always Google or just YouTube uh, concrete construction and you should be able to get a good grasp on how concrete buildings are constructed. If you're learning about wood construction, the APA website has some good free resources. You can also check out the AWA, and if you want a 3D model that you wanna play around with, you can look up the MyTech uh, 3D Viewer. I know wood has a lot of parts and it's really complicated to envision if you've never seen it before, so that's a good tool to have. And I'm going to link uh, all these in the description below. And if you want a more structured approach to learning about construction, uh, you you can pick up the book Fundamentals of Building Construction, Materials and Methods by Edward Allen. I personally have that book and it has lots of pictures and it does a pretty good job of explaining the whole construction process, as well as all the different structural systems that we use in the industry. The second thing that I would want to focus on is drawings, blueprints and sketching. I cannot tell you how important this skill is in the industry and how egregious and how unfortunate it is that a lot of students don't learn this at school and they have to learn it on the job. Why is this so important? It's essentially the language that we use to communicate in the architectural engineering and construction industry. Imagine being a programmer and you don't know the programming language. This is essentially what we're doing. We're jumping into the industry and we don't know how to read, construct, or even interpret these uh, blueprints, these drawings. This is how we communicate and this is how buildings actually get built. So how would I get better at learning to read construction drawings? Well, probably the most obvious answer is get yourself a set of construction drawings and try to interpret it. But that is easier said than done. You can probably find some free resources online such as a bgstructuralengineering.com. They have a free set of drawings. But if you want a more formal, uh, structured way to learn it, I recommend picking up the book Commercial Building Construction Materials and Methods by David Madsen. This is a fairly new book, came out in the last couple years, uh, but it does go through these different types of building materials and how the drawings are. And they even have a full set of architectural, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and structural drawings in there as well for uh, a real project. I'll link that book in the description below, but if you're an ASCE member, uh, you should have access to Access Engineering uh, by McGraw-Hill, and you should be able to find that resource uh, there already for you as that Access Engineering has a bunch of engineering books already. I would also try to learn Revit as it helps you uh, visualize 2D things in 3D spaces. That's one of the things that you have to get good at. You're looking at 2D details, but you have to create a 3D image in your mind. And with Revit, at least you can draw 2D plans and then you can kind of see and start 
making those 3D visualizers in your brain a lot more effective when you can see it in 2D and 3D. So that helped me a lot since I'm a very visual person. The third thing I would wanna focus more on is programming. Now this isn't an essential skill yet, but it is becoming more and more common and more useful in the structural engineering industry as we're using a lot of structural engineering programs. And programming and computer science is a skill that I'm still working on because it can help me in my structural engineering workflows. And this is why I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Brilliant. If you want to learn STEM skills in a hands-on, interactive, and fun way, Brilliant is the best way to do it. They have thousands of lessons ranging from algorithms, mathematics, logic, and scientific thinking with exclusive new content added monthly. I love how Brilliant just makes it feel like you're solving a puzzle instead of learning because it's so interactive. For example, I'm currently taking their computer science fundamentals course. Here, we're supposed to find out how many ways there are to cross the bridges without crossing the same bridge twice. This would be a pain to do by hand, but by learning how computers search for solutions to these problems, this can be done in milliseconds. I'm becoming a better problem solver because they break down these seemingly complex concepts into easy to understand interactive visuals with simple explanations. And it just makes me an overall better engineer because learning the science behind these types of problems is the first step in solving them. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash mattpicardle or click on the link in the description below. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And the last one is going back to the basics of structural engineering. This means paying more attention in statics, dynamics, a strength of materials, and particularly the behavior of structures, paying particularly close attention to that. Why is this so important? Why would I want to do this? Well, with the advancement of structural engineering software, all of those calculations, all of those derivations that you're probably learning in school are becoming a less and less valuable to you in the structural engineering industry. Software can design beams infinitely faster than you, but the software and the computer are still man-made and they're still going to have errors. And it's up to you as the structural engineer to verify that the computer, whatever the software is spitting out is uh, correct and safe. So how do you make sure a super complex finite element analysis model is correct? You're not gonna do the finite element analysis calculations by hand, that's why you have the computer do it. Well, you go back to the basics, you go back to statics. You try to figure out what the simpler model is, let's say for a slab, your finite element model is showing you slab deflection. Well, if you have a good understanding of behavior, you'll know how the slab is going to deflect. That's one check. Is the slab deflecting the way that you're expecting? If you modeled a truss, is that modeled correctly and is the, is the software uh, giving you the correct results? How do you check that? Well, if you go back to the basics of trusses, you'll have tension and compression. Typically tension at the bottom, compression at the top. So typically what structural engineers do is that they usually have the answer and the sizes and the structural system in mind and they already have some type of design in mind and they're just using the software to verify that. They're not using the software to design because that's that can get dangerous. They have the concepts and the load paths and the, the beam systems already in place in their head and then they're just going to use that software to verify it. Again, if you're a structural engineer, you can't blame the software for any mistakes or if the building falls down. It's your stamp that's on it and it's you that's approving and making sure that the software is putting out correct and safe results. If you made it all the way through this video, I really appreciate it. I'd appreciate if you'd like and subscribe as well. It really does help the channel and helps the YouTube algorithm as well. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.